Hey, accredited investor, I'm so pumped to tell you about this brick, beautiful property that we just got. It's 166 units, solid brick building, almost 100% occupied. There's two vacancies right now out of 166 units. The only reason we got this is because the sellers took out one of those crazy loans two years ago and their loan is expiring. Otherwise they would have been able to keep this building for the long haul, but we're stepping in at the perfect time to swoop up and grab this building. It's presently rented 15% below market rate rents. I have the comps inside the actual property to prove that too. All you have to do to learn more is go to homeinvest.com and click on one of the invest buttons. Or you can look down in the description of this podcast wherever you're seeing it and you can see the link in the podcast description. Now, always consult with a tax advisor, a financial planner, or an attorney before making investment decisions. Having said all that, all you have to do to learn more is go to homeinvest.com or click on the link down in the description below. Thanks and looking forward to partnering with you. Should the government regulate home investing, real estate investing, multifamily investing? Should they take Wall Street out of real estate? This is going to be the question that we are talking about today on Purpose Driven Passive Profits. This is a hot topic right now. Should the government be involved and how does this affect you as an investor? We're going to jump into that. If you are new to the show, uh, the guy with me is Nate Armstrong. He is the founder and CEO of Home Invest. We are a real estate company with more than 20 years of experience, both in single family and multifamily. My name is Steve Warner. I am your chief investment officer, and we are here to give you the latest cutting edge stories and what they mean to you when it comes to real estate, all with the idea of how to be a great steward of the gifts, time, energy, and money God has given you. All right, Nate, let's jump into it. The government is talking about regulating single family home investment right now, but only if it's in a fund. Let's talk about this one a little bit. Yeah, there. this is some big legislation. If this goes anywhere, let's see if it goes anywhere or not. It's funny because the, some Democratic congressmen just introduced this bill last week and it took to the internet like wildfire. Like literally, there's a big YouTuber out there that did a poll and 80% of the people that responded said, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's do this. But I'm pretty sure that 0% have actually took the time to read the le re legislation. So I think that we should unpack that here because this could have some pretty serious consequences to the, to what they're to the actual housing market. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, if you look at the headline, should Wall Street be taken out of single family housing? And it makes it sound horrible, right? I mean, most Americans would say, oh, that's what's responsible for driving up rent, that's what's responsible for driving up home prices, but that's not true. That's the assumption and the media especially the left wing people, the liberals are pushing and like fanning that fire. But what's really going on here? Let's go ahead and unpack it a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're using this as a sound bite. And if they did get it through, then it would be, you know, one for the, the newspapers that they can say, look what we got our constituents. But the reality is, is that Wall Street as an entirety only owns 574,000 single family houses. That's reported by Vice and a few other places on the internet. That's like that's less than 2% of the housing stock. It's not that big of a number. Yeah, I know it's a big number. Yeah, Nate, 574, that's nothing to, to laugh at. Yeah, I understand that. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not this massive, massive number. But when you're someone out there in Atlanta, Georgia, struggling to find affordable housing right now, and you're looking for a bad guy to blame, it's really easy to point the finger at Wall Street and say, it's you guys. It's Invitation Homes. You guys own 80,000 houses. It's American Homes for Rent. You guys own 40,000 houses. It's easy to point the finger there. But the reality is, and this is my bigger fear, Steve, if this actually takes root, what they're doing is they're going to tell Wall Street, they're going to tell hedge funds, they're going to tell investors in general, don't buy and rehabilitate. Don't invest money into single family housing. You stay out of it. And then what will happen is th they think that that will solve the problem of affordable housing. That's what they believe. That's what the drafters of this legislation believe. But the reality is, is that every time you remove investment capital, whether it be from a bank or from a hedge fund or from a private individual, 
Every time you start to pull back on liquidity of capital, you get less renovating done. You get less improvements done. You get less housing stock in the end. And so I think that this is actually very dangerous legislation. I, I hope it gets squashed. I hope that people stand up and say, hey, we shouldn't want the government meddling in private affairs. That's what I hope happens. I mean, that's what we hope, but we know that that is not the way the country is leaning right now. What do you think, what should we be saying to that? Because I, I hear like commonplace, like if I was talking about this at church, there are definitely people at church that would be like, oh, but it sounds good because it's keeping big investors out of our housing market. I don't mind small investors being there. This is only going to affect Wall Street. So how do we have that conversation? Like, what do we talk about with them? Yeah, well, you know, we're, this is important too. So we're small potatoes, like here at Home Invest, I, I know that we do big numbers, but if you compare us to American Homes for Rent or Invitation Homes, some of these publicly traded companies, we're like a little speck compared to them. And we've had well over 75 single family homes under our care at any given time. We now with multifamily property, like we've got way more units than that. And the reality is, is that we're not out there crushing the, the dream of Americans to go and find affordable housing. We're providing it. We're delivering it to the communities that, that we work in. Most of the housing that we provide is affordable housing. It's class C. You and I talk about this a lot, Steve. Like that's the, the bread and butter. That's like the plumber, the policeman, the teacher going to work every single day. We provide that kind of housing. And if this legislation gets crammed down our throat, number one, we won't be able to serve our investors. Number two, we will not be able to provide that housing. We're just going to have to step back and say, okay, fine. I guess we're not going to be able to provide beautiful single family houses for people that, that need affordable housing. Instead, we're going to have to just continue down the multifamily track. That's what it would do to people like us. Well, that's so that's what I see happening. What this will actually do is it will take everybody out of single family housing and everybody will move into multifamily, which is going to push up the cost of apartments, which will ultimately end up pushing up the cost of housing as well. It's kind of crazy how all of that works. What uh, what should we do as investors right now? Should we write somebody in the Senate? Should we be talking about this? Should we just be watching it? What does this mean for investors right now? Yeah, I, I do think we do need to call our representatives. We need to write them. We need to call them. We need to tell them we do not believe in this. This is not good to have government meddling in the midst of the housing market. Because if we don't, and our representatives just respond to some famous YouTubers poll, and that's kind of what tends to happen nowadays. I feel like they're going off of the, they lick their finger and they stick their finger up in the air to feel which way the wind is blowing. And then they kind of lean in that direction. I, I think we do definitely need to stand up. We need to say something. We need to say, hey, this is not a great idea. Maybe there's a version of this that could work. But at the end of the day, anytime that the government comes in with a heavy hand and metals in the market, there's always a dire consequence on the backside of it. So I think we all need to adamantly oppose this, this legislation. Yeah, I mean, I look at what's going on with interest rates right now. You want to talk about the government messing with stuff like government, Fed stepping in, raised interest rates, froze the market, pushing us into what is going to be a pretty long, hard recession for most of America. It's the government should stay out of it. I mean, that is that's that's the end end right there um if you guys are watching this you saw nate put up the the news press we'll see where this goes over the next couple of weeks i think the other thing that's going on that's playing into this is we're going into an election year and that's they want the headlines they want the drama which is sad but i think that's that is true yeah it's it's funny because even in the legislation itself it's all for the headlines at this point because even if this passed the way that they submitted it there are so many loopholes in this thing. Like one of them is, is that you can only have 75 houses in one fund. Well, then what would stop a Wall Street landlord from having 74 houses in one fund and then creating a second fund for 74 houses? Like little things like that, you know that they would be exploited if this actually took root. So uh, this is a, a headline grabber. You're absolutely right, Steve. Yeah, that's really what they're after here. 
All right, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Purpose Driven Passive Profits. If you would like to hear about Nate and I's latest investment opportunity, you can go to homeinvest.com. We have all the information on our past investments and our current investments there. You can also book a call with us. And until next time, be great stewards of what God has given you, and we will see you here on Purpose Driven Passive Profits.